Back when I was a junior in high school, I visited a friend of mine who happened to live out in the country. They lived on top of this, this um, large hill. And on the way home, I thought to myself, you know, I wonder how fast I can get my car going down this hill. Now, at that time, I had my grandparents' 1973 Oldsmobile Cutlass with the 350 rocket engine in it and a speedometer that went up to 120 miles an hour. So I get to the top of the hill and I put that pedal to the metal and vroom, right down the hill I go. I buried the needle. Well, about halfway down the hill, I started thinking to myself, uh-oh, what happens if a tire blows? That's going to be the end of me, not just the end of that car. So I took my foot off the gas and kind of coasted the rest of the way down. But that's about as close to the edge that I ever got driving. Well, it reminds me of a story that happened several hundred years ago. There was this king. And this king was getting ready to go on a long journey. So he called his three top carriage drivers and began to ask them a series of questions. The last question was the most important. He asked the first driver, he said, if we happen to be on a very narrow mountain pass, how close to the edge do you think you could get before you'd worry about the carriage going over? And the guy said, oh, I'm, I'm experienced. I've been doing this a long time. I'm, I'm sure I could get within 18 inches of the edge with no problem whatsoever. King thought to himself, oh, okay. Goes to the next carriage driver, asks him the same question. Hey, how close to the edge do you think you could get uh, before you would be concerned about the carriage tipping and going over? And the carriage driver said, you know, I have been driving carriages ever since I was a young boy. My father was a carriage driver. He taught me everything he knew. I'm very, very experienced. I'll bet you I could get you within six inches of that edge and wouldn't even worry about it. Well, he went to the third carriage driver and asked him the exact same question. But the third carriage driver had a completely different answer. He said, oh, King, I value your life and your safety more than anything else. It's not how close to the edge I would get. It's how far away from the edge could I stay so that I know you and the royal carriage would stay safe. You know, there is, there is something in us. There's this attitude that is in us that makes us kind of push the envelope, isn't there? I, I've experienced in my life, and I'm sure you have as well. You know, it's kind of what made me gun the car on that day. It's what makes kids uh, ask how messy can I keep my room before mom and dad get really upset with me? Or just how much schoolwork do I need to do to be able to just kind of skate by? Or how late at night can I stay out before I get in real trouble? Now, those are all fairly harmless things, but the trouble is the older that we get, the problems become more complex, don't they? The issues become much bigger when we're dating. You know, how close can I get in my purity before going too far? How, how can I write out my finances in such a way that I can withhold money from the IRS? How long can I keep watching these videos on my screen before I get caught? And on and on and on it goes. How far can I, you know, how, how long can I hide from my spouse? D just different things like that. I, there's something in us that makes us do that. Well, if we're Jesus followers and we're asking ourselves those kind of questions, just how far can I go before I sin or get in trouble? We're asking the wrong question. Our question should reflect the question of that third carriage driver who said, oh, King, I would be asking how far from the edge can I stay? How far from the edge can we stay before we find ourselves getting in trouble? You know, that was Paul's point in Romans chapter 12, the first two verses, where he writes, and for some of you this will be very familiar, therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, in other words, in light of everything that God has done for us, all that he has provided for us, as well as giving us his son Jesus, I urge you, I plead with you, I beg you to present your bodies, this is a willful act, to God 
to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy, that just means set apart, and pleasing, God-honoring to God. This is your true worship. It's not about attending church or what church you attend or how often you pray or read your Bible or how big you, uh, your tithe is. Or, you know, all that stuff is great, but that's not what's most important. Do not be conformed to this age. In other words, don't live the way that culture teaches you to live, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by having a mindset change, by changing your mind, so that you may discern, be able to differentiate, be able to tell what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. You know, maybe the question that we should be asking for those of us that are following Jesus should be, God, how can I honor you today? How can my words, how can my thoughts, how can my actions bring you glory today in light of everything that you have done for me? What would it look like for your life if you started asking questions like that? Then instead of asking, how close to the edge can I get? You reverse that. How far from the edge can I get? Would you be better for it? Would your families be better for it? Would our culture maybe be just a little bit better for it? Let me pray for us. Father, change, change our life from the inside out. Help us to think differently so that we can act in a way that pleases and honors you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless. Have a great week.